Even the forces of evil can't stop me. Sometimes I ask myself, why do I open videos the way I do? Because I'm pretty slow, and I also forgot my headphones again. But what is up? What's welcome, welcome back to another Whisker 10 banger video. And in today's video, we are going over what is the best five-star spear for Zone Lee. Now, I highly doubt that most of you have all these five-star weapons. But if you do, guys, I got the video right here which one you should run on him and why you should run on him. And there are only three five-star pull arms, right? So, let's go ahead and get into this video. But, 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 before we do, y'all already know what I'm about to say. You can say it with me. If you are new to the channel, if you are new to the Whisker Kingdom, if these doors have been opened to you and you have just walked into the Whisker Kingdom and you see all these happy people, that makes you want to be happy too, right? Join the Whiskribers on the grind to 1,400. Whisker gang on top and smash that like button down below. But alright, let's get into this video. I really gotta stop forgetting my headphones. Okay guys, Vortex Vanquisher. We have the Vortex Vanquisher, the Prime Radial Jade, and the Skyward Spine. Now we're going to go over all these weapons, and I'm going to go over them in detail. Some of these weapons depend. We're not just going to go over the plain weapon. We're going to go over the actual build for the weapons you play. It depends on how you build your zone lead, which weapon, which pole arm you should actually play on him. But which is the most viable? Which is the best one you can have for him if you have all three of these somehow, some way, right? So... First, we have the Vortex Vanquisher, which is a 5-star pull arm, as you know. Its base attack is 46, which can go up to 608, I believe. And the secondary stat is attack percent, which is 10.8, which is where it comes in. Attack percent for a secondary stat value is really, really good, because as you do know, attack percent does apply to normal, to charge, to elemental skills, and elemental burst. It applies to all that, because it's literally just your attack, it goes to your attack percent, right? Then we have its passive, which is called Golden Majesty. This, increase, this increases the shield strength by 20%. Scoring hits on opponents increases attack by 4% for 8 seconds with a max of 5 stacks. And this can only occur once every 0.3 seconds. And while protected by a shield, the attack increase that you get from uh, the attack increasing by 4% every time you hit somebody for 8 seconds is increased by 100%. So say, for example, you increase your attack. Every time you hit somebody, you increase your attack by 4% with a max of 5 stacks, which means it's a max of 20% increased attack. Once you have a shield on, that increases that by 100%. So now you have 40% attack, if you get what I'm saying, right? So why is this good? I'm gonna I'm gonna actually like think I'm gonna actually tell you about this right for his only everybody really thought the best way to go on him was for chasing bow life but as video surfaced as you know people have played the character and made guides on him and seen what he can do he gets his elemental burst back really really fast now that doesn't necessarily mean like okay so you're spamming elements of burst that doesn't mean that because the character can be built in a dps manner as well as an elemental burst spam manner right so what we have right here the reason this weapon is so good is because not only is it built for him it looks like his theme and all it increases his shield strength by 20 percent if you did not know Zongli's elemental skill when he triggers his shield when he holds it for his jade skill it lasts for 20 seconds and the cooldown is 12 seconds so you can never run out of shield if you keep continuously pressing and holding your e you will never run out of shield you will never be without your shield unless it breaks but like you do know it scales off his hp and he could get tons of hp he has a really good base hp so you will get even more hp like it's you, you can make him really tanky but you don't need a focus on hp only you see what i'm saying so like just know though hp does make his shield way stronger and way more durable right and also in his passive hp gives him the additional 33 percent damage to his elemental burst which is also useful right that doesn't mean build him on hp only guys that's just like you know you have subsets for hp which will be really really beneficial to you right so not only is this increasing your shield strength by 20 percent and you do know you're going to be having a lot of shield every time especially when you crystallize since you're a geo you're gonna be causing if you go against like elements like slime hydro slimes or pyro slimes you're gonna be making them drop those crystals after you do an elemental skill or elemental burst and then you're gonna pick those up and have a crystallized shield and then you're gonna have your jade shield so you're constantly gonna have a shield there's not gonna be a time you don't have a shield when you're playing zone lead right so you're gonna increase your shield strength by 20 percent which is really really good for benefiting of the the stronger shield and whatnot 
So, and also, you're going to be hitting opponents a lot. So, you're going to be increasing your attack by 4% for 8 seconds with max 5 stacks. And this, the reason that this is really good is because it can only occur every once. Once every 0.3 seconds. Which means you can continuously stack this. Like, the, the cooldown is extremely good. And it's basically perfect for spamming to consistently keep the 20% plus attack. As long as you keep hitting enemies over and over and over again. And it lasts for 8 seconds. So, that's really good as well, right? And then... Like I said, you're going to be in a shield 100% at all times, like I said, literally. So, the reason this is so viable is inconsistent is because while you're protected by a shield, your attack, the attack, the attack increase, right, of the 20% is increased by 100%, which means you're going up to 40% increased attack, and that does not mention your passives that you have on your shields, just in case you want to run a different, like, Zin Yan, for example, and you run her and her passive won't, once you put her shield on, you get plus 15% increased physical damage. You know, you know what I'm saying? So, like, these shields have buffs and whatnot, right? That you can stack onto what this weapon can do. And it can just make it even more monstrous, right? He can be run with a four-piece for Tracing Bolt. Like, yes, he can, run, he can be run with a, a Glads if you want. But he also can be run with a Elemental Burst um, elemental burst build as well. Which is Noblesse Obliged as well as Archaic Petra, right? So, that is really about it for this weapon. This weapon is really, really good on Zhong Li. I feel like this is the most used option you want to use since it's like really safe, increasing your attack. And like I said, attack increases your normal charge, elemental skill, elemental burst, increases everything. So it's really, it's really universal, even though it's not as much as like, you know, crit damage or as much as like, you know, geo damage because they're different. You know what I'm saying? But it's still a safe option and a really good, really, really good pull arm. For what it does it's on the defense side and as well as the offense side which makes it extremely viable and good for his own lead now let's go ahead and move on to the primary radial jade guys now this one this one in my opinion is absolutely broken this is actually Zhao's spear when he comes out this is the spear you want to run on Zhao so what we have is the base attack is 48 right as you can see, it's actually two, two uh, points higher than the base attack of the Vanquisher, right? So, the base attack is 48. The secondary stat is crit rate. Crit rate. Like I said, guys. And it's a 4 point. It starts at a 4.8%. The crit rate, crit rate in this game is so important. If you have high crit damage and high crit rate, you're literally just going to be wiping the field. I'm telling you, this is what you really, really want. I mean, not saying that this weapon is perfect for him. I'm just saying, depending on how you build your zone lead, that this weapon will actually be broken because of the crit rate. And if you have crit damage um, main stats on one of your Eon, Eon them or Goblet, and you have Geo damage, and you have attack percent, it's over. If you have those three stats for your Eon, Eon them and Goblet, it is over if you have this weapon as well for the, uh, for the crit rate. Because you have crit damage like crazy, and then you might have, you know, some good crit damage. You want to look for good crit rate and crit damage substats on your all your artifacts so you're gonna have that and then you're gonna have this crit rate and then you're gonna have the crit damage on your main stat of one of your uh, goblet eon or eon them right so this is really good that's just the secondary stat type is already you know making it good making it very versatile you know what i'm saying so then we have this passive which is eagle spear of justice on hit this increases attack by 3.2 percent for six seconds this has a max of seven stacks this effect can only occur once every 0.3 seconds while in possession of the maximum possible stacks, damage dealt is increased by 12%. Guys, alright, so let's do the math real quick. So, this is similar to the Vortex Vanquisher with the cooldown of 0.3, meaning it could be constantly spammed. What I'm looking at at this weapon the most is once you do this hit, right? On hit, you're going to do the 3.2% for 6 seconds with a max of 7 stacks. Once you stack that up to 7, it goes up to 22, 22 plus percent, right? And then, once you're at the max stack, which is 7, which is 22 plus percent, your damage increases by another 12 percent, which will finally put you at 34.4 percent increased attack, guys. You have 34.4 increased attack. So, the, and that's going to be consistent because you're constantly going to have the max stack because you're going to be hitting enemies a lot and it has a cooldown of 0.3 seconds, which is not even a second, so you're just going to keep procking this and procking this all the stacks and the stacks are just going to stay there as long as you consistently hit your enemies and having the crit rate and then having good crit damage on your build will make it even better because you're just going to be critting that whole time while you're doing this and you're going to your attack is just going to increase 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 and stay increased so that's like that's why i feel like this weapon is extremely good now between i'm, I'm going to actually explain which which weapon you should run depending on your play style after we go over the last weapon 
So right now what I'm thinking is Prime Radial Jade is a really really good weapon, very very universal. It can be used definitely on basically any of his builds. It, any of Zhongli's builds you can really use this on. If you want to use a, him as a DPS, white damage DPS is definitely going to be used on him like that. If you want to use him for uh, elemental burst damage, he's definitely going to be used on elemental burst damage. This is versatile with the attack percent guys. So. Definitely, I'm going to explain exactly what what weapons you should run, if you have them, which one you should run out of all of these, right? So, let's go ahead and go to the next weapon, which is the final weapon. The Skyward Spine, guys. Yes. So, this weapon is interesting. I'm, like, the Vortex Vanquisher has that, you know, not two, that base attack is not uh, negative two, unlike these, which has that 48. Vortex has 46. That kind of sucks, but it's okay, because Vortex Vanquisher offers a lot. So we have the base attack of 48, secondary stat is energy recharge. Now, I hear a lot of people saying that Zonglee does not need energy recharge. He does not need it, blah blah, blah this and that and the third. Now, I, I'm not going to argue with you. He really, he honestly doesn't, but for if you want to OD on getting your elemental burst fast, like back really fast, energy recharge is the way to go. You really want your elemental burst back really fast, like every single time. Energy recharge is the way to go. Now, this is not needed, like everybody has been saying. It's really not needed because he gets his he gets his elemental burst back really fast by himself. He really doesn't need energy recharge. But if you want to run this, this is preference. If you want to run this, get his elemental burst back like every couple seconds. Go ahead, run the energy recharge. And so, base attack 48, energy recharge uh, is the secondary stat starts at eight, and the passive is Black Wing. What this does is it increases crit rate by 8% and increases normal attack speed by 12%. Additionally, normal and charged attacks, attack hits on enemies have 50% chance to trigger a vacuum blade that deals 40% of attack as damage in a small AoE. This effect can occur no more than once every 2 seconds. Now this weapon is really good, but honestly I feel like this is more of a refinement weapon. You need to refine this for it to be like at maximum, maximum. Because when it says increases the crit rate by 8% and increases normal attack speed by 12%, there is no stack for that. That literally is just raw. As soon as you have this weapon on, it's increasing your crit rate by 8% and increasing your normal attack speed by 12%. So I have a refinement for this. I'm pretty sure the refinement will increase the crit rate as well as the attack speed percent. So like this will be more of a refinement weapon, right? But it's still good. It's still good for that little 8% and as well as that 12%. This is more for like if you want to like... This isn't even for DPS really. It's just actually... I mean, it is for DPS, but it's not mainly for DPS for having a secondary stat of energy recharge. This is to help you get your elemental burst back as fast as possible. So, having the when when you normal when you normal and charge attack on an enemy, you have a 50% chance to trigger a vacuum, right? So this is similar. I actually it's actually pretty similar to the very distant bow, or so I, I forgot what it was called. But it was it's a bow basically where you shoot you keep shooting as like a uh, a percent chance of making a vacuum where they all get sucked in and it constantly does like I think 40% of the attack damage so it's similar to this actually right so once you do a normal charge attack every time you hit them you have a 50% chance meaning a flip a coin half a chance to trigger a vacuum that deals 40% of attack as damage in the small AOE so the better your attack the better this damage is gonna do right so. This effect can only occur every two seconds, basically. Um, so that's a really good cooldown. It's this weapon is probably like the one you would least opt for out of all of them, in my opinion. I mean, unless, like I said, unless you want to go for elemental burst every every single second, like you get your elemental burst back very fast for having high energy recharge, and especially if you have it on some of your stats and main stats. Well, you don't really want to get main stats for energy recharge. What you really want to do is crit damage. You want to do crit damage, geo damage, and attack percent. And that's really what you want to focus on. But if you want to be like a DPS white damage, you want to focus on physical damage, attack percent, as well as crit damage, right? So, which one would you opt for out of all of these? Let's see. So, honestly, Vortex Vanquisher is for a player that wants to basically abuse abuse the shield strength, right? You want to abuse shield strength. You want to make your shield stronger. This is the way to go. It's giving you a lot of attack. And it's also giving you this shield, and it's also giving you this increased attack on the passive. So this is definitely the most safest option. This is why they released the banner as soon as they released him. This is the perfect option for his own lead. And then we have the primordial shade. Now this option right here, for the crit rate, secondary val uh, secondary stat value, and then the passive, which is absolutely broken for a max of 34.4%. If you max out the stack, it's this weapon is sorry. This weapon is extremely good. 
for DPS as well as attack purposes. But if you are if you are abyss main and you want to like pop off an abyss, you want your shields as strong as possible, so you don't take as you take as minimum damage as possible. You just want to like tank everything. Vortex Vanquisher is the way to go. If you want the primary radial, primary radial jade, you you that's basically saying okay, I want DPS, I want mad damage, I want to crit every single time. This is what this is. You want to crit and do mad damage, primary radial jade. You want to be tanky and do good damage, not not as many crits, but do damage. Then you want to go with this, like 100% Vortex Vanquisher. Now, as well as this, Skyward Spine, like I said, this is for elemental burst. If you want to spam elemental burst, the passive really is, it's it's bad, it's really good, but it's not as crazy as the primary radial jade, as well as the Vortex Vanquisher. So really, this is a battle between the Vortex Vanquisher and the primary radial jade, because this one is just for elemental burst. That's up to you, your preference. But right here, like I said, you want to crit a lot, crit rate percent, having crit rate percent on your sub stats or crit rate percent on your main stat, depending on how crazy you are for crit, crit rate, and also having crit damage, because you know, if you have crit rate, what's the point of having crit rate if you don't have crit damage? You need crit damage. So the more crit damage you have, the more that crit, once you do the crit rate, once you have a good crit rate, it's going to crit a lot and do that crit damage plus the type percent, all that. You get it. So you really want to go for, this, if you want to go for a lot of crits, a lot of crit rate, you want to actually like, you know, because like this does apply to its elemental burst as well. Once you do your elemental burst, you have a better chance to crit since you have a good crit rate percent. If you have good a good build on your zone lead, of course, like I said, like Noblesly Oblige and the Archaic Petra. And then on your Eon, Eon Therm or Goblet, you need crit damage, geo damage, and you also need attack percent. And then once you run this, you have that crit rate to back up that crit damage. And then you have crit rate and crit damage on your substats of all those artifacts. And then boom, you're going to be critting like crazy. There's not going to be a time you're not going to be critting because the secondary stat value being crit rate, ha making your crit rate even higher, which is really, really good, right? And as you can see right here, I'm going to show you. It can go up to 22.1% crit rate, which is a really, really good additional crit rate to, to your crit rate because, you know, you don't really like... Characters do not start. Some characters do. Some characters do start off with crit rate, but most characters don't. Like Zone Lee does not start off with crit rate. He starts off once you ascend him with Geo damage, right? So having this crit rate will be very important, and it will definitely help in the long run if you want to do a lot of crits and a lot of damage with your crit damage. But like I said, this is the safest option. Has attack percent. You have really, really good attack. You're just not going to be critting like that unless you have a crit build on your Zone Lee. And then the shield is going to make you tanky, you're going to get more attack, and it's going to be consistently, consistently having more attack. So, it's up to you whether you want to be a shielded warrior or whether you want to be a critting warrior. Which is a shielding, shielding strength warrior or critting sh uh, strength warrior. It's up to you. But in my opinion, what is the best option? This is the most best option because all around this is going to increase your shield strength and your attack percent. Because if you play Abyss, you know, if you play against bosses and everything, you want to take as minimum damage as possible. This is the best way to go, right? This one, this one just does mad damage because of the crit rate and having crit, uh, high crit damage would just make it a monstrous weapon, which is why it's going to be really good for, uh, for Zhao, right? So that's really about it for this video. In my opinion, what you should run is the Vortex Bank for sure. Well, it's my preference because I'm going to be spamming shield and, you know, playing him in Abyss a lot so that I can like tank everything. But if I'm not in Abyss and I have the primary radial jade and I don't play Abyss and I just like, like seeing those high crit, crit damage numbers and high crit numbers and whatnot, you really want to run the primary radial jade because you're going to be critting a lot as long as you have a really good, uh, crit damage and crit build on him as well as an elemental burst build right so that's really about it for this video that is my opinion guys y'all can say say what you think down in the comment section down below what do you think is the best one which one is the best why is it the best and yeah that's really about it for this video i thank you to everybody that came out to watch this video and i hope you did enjoy and i hope this video did help you if you do have all these weapons i hope it did help you pick which weapon you actually want to use right so anyway guys I will catch you guys in the next video. Make sure you subscribe down below. Join the subscribers on grind to 1,400, baby. And like this video if you did enjoy and if it did help. But I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.